Hello, this is Father Louis Skurdy with episode two, Who is St. Catherine of Bologna? My guests are Father Steve Shadwell, who translated many of her prayers, and Monsignor Pat Panos, who in the last episode left us off planning his itinerary to Bologna, right? Yes. <laughs> and what did you discover when you got to Bologna? Well, we... Landed, the, not landed, we were in the bus. <laughs> <laughs> you we, we, we pulled up our, our escort. He said, you don't want to see Catherine of Bologna. There is no St. Catherine of Bologna. You want to see Catherine of Siena. So on our hijacking journey, we didn't go right to Bologna. Roy, uh, Roy and I, no, we have to go to Bologna. No, there's no St. Catherine of Bologna. We're going to see Catherine of Siena. So up we go to Siena. We take another detour up to Siena. <laughs> We see, go into the church, see St. Catherine of Siena. All you can see is her skull. The head, no, yes, it's ugh. in a box. Right. And then we walk down to the polio for the racetrack, you know, and then back on the oh, bus. Hold on. Catholics regard parts of the body of saints as relics. So even though it was just her skull, that's a relic of St. Catherine. Go ahead. <laughs> so then Roy put his foot down and said, no, you take us to Bologna. Yeah, it's like it's around the corner. Yeah, so it was, <laughs> it's, it's a, good, yeah, you know, it's a yeah, nice yeah, ride. Yeah. So we pull up to Piazza Maggiore, the main square, and our, our escort, he got off the bus, he asked the policeman, where is the monastery? So he's told it's about, you know, three blocks off the main square. So I just told the people on the bus, I said, you know, we'll be walking very fast. And a lot of old people here, look at this wonderful square, get some gelato, go yeah. shopping. <laughs> but we're going to go hot-footed yes. up, you, up you to the, the monastery. The pilgrimage, okay. And so we got there. Gino was all, or escort, he was all, so he... The first church, he, he went into the first church he came in was a Jesuit place. I didn't even know who it was. We still had another block and a half to go. So we got to the, to the monastery, and uh, we're, the chapel, St. Catherine's Chapel, was open. And we um, go into the, into the little museum that's attached to the chapel where St. Mm -hmm. Catherine's body is. And her guardian, Sister Margarita... She's one of the older sisters. There were only about six sisters in the community at oh, that wow. time. But she was St. Catherine's guardian. She would be the one who changed her clothes. And you know, every so often, of course, St. Catherine is dressed in the current habit mm. of the mm. sisters today. She originally was gray when she started. But she, every now, couple... Now, what Father is explaining is that Sister Guardian is changing the clothes, the, her, her vestments, you might say, her habit... habit. Um, on the corpse, the preserved corpse of St. Catherine. And at the beginning and end of our episode, you'll see St. Catherine sitting in the chair there at the monastery. Yeah, so so anyway, she was so surprised to find out that Catherine was in America. So she she goes running back into the, into the, cha the, the convent the, and... Uh, she comes back with a bottle of uh, their bitters. Oh, really? <laughs> they yes. had their own brand. That's right. Stop <laughs> it. That's yeah, funny. The, the it's delicious. Claire. Really? Yeah, so, <laughs> poor so I had bitters. that. And then Roy and I each got a, a relic. She gave us a relic. Uh, I have, and so I have it, and uh, it's a piece of Catherine's skin. Oh. Yes. Yeah. yeah. If you if you went to the monastery today, and you went to the gift shop there, what you would get if you wanted a relic of Saint Catherine would be a piece of her habit, okay. because every couple of years, as I said, Sister Margarita, they they take. The, there's no wires holding Catherine up in her chair. She's just sitting there mm. in this chair, mm. and they can take her body out and then set it back. So. They so, put a ha new habit on her, and then she, Sister Marguerite cuts the, the company that makes all their religious right, articles. Right, right, right. So um, I'm, I'm fascinated now when she's sitting up there. Uh, when she died, did, did she die in her chair? Did, was she no, 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 no. That's quite a story. Oh, when she, when she died, they buried her in the, the garden, the monastery garden. Right. And I finally, after about two years ago, I finally got 
permission from the new mother abbess, took me into the real, the heart of the monastery, real cloistered part, mm. the garden where St. Catherine was buried. Okay. Because I tried for all these years to try and get back there, but of course I no, couldn't. No, no, all no. I could get was here to the, the chapel. <laughs> Bled the Medigan. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, uh, uh, what was your... Uh, uh, I wonder how... How we, did you get to be seated? In, in, in that chair. Yeah, in that chair. All right. So, for the, she died in 1463, and they just buried her in the, in the ground. Sure. But there was this older sanctity when she died. And they buried her in the ground. The sisters, they cleaned her all up. She was in the habit. And they just, four of them, buried her down yeah. right in the ground. But her, her sister Luminata Bembo, her, her buddy, right from the very beginning in, in Farrar when she entered the poor Clares, she had painted a painting of St. Catherine. And you could see when she was had, when she had died, and you could see the face, how old she was, and oh. ashen color. But when she died, the color started to come back into her face, and mm. she started to get younger and younger looking. Mm. So the sisters just buried her in the in the ground because they would get the the bishop and some, have a proper funeral or something. Sure. But they buried her there, and she was so beautiful. The sisters didn't want to just dump the dirt on her body, so they they put a veil, covered her face, and then they put a, a, a board all the length of her body, mm -hmm. and they lifted it up a bit just so the dirt wouldn't crush right, her right, beautiful right, body, right. and they buried her. And then the the saint just kept stronger and stronger. The, the, the scent. Smell. Yeah, the, the scent. scent. Okay. And, but the, and the sisters, when they, they'd go out, because they all said they they loved her. And all the six sisters were healed. All these miracles were happening. Oh. The people out in the city started hearing about this. And so the bishop said, no, the sisters said, we have to exhume the body. Mm. And uh, the one priest chaplain said, well, if it's decayed, then yeah, yeah right. bury her right back up again. But, of course, when they, the, her four sister companions, they couldn't wait to the official day. So the night before, they went out into the garden. It was very dark, and it was raining and everything, but then all of a sudden the skies opened up <laughs> and shining down on Catherine. Mm. And so when they uncovered her, you know, the, the board had collapsed a little bit and had broken her nose. Uh, not broken, you know, to the side. Yeah. But anyway, right. they put it back up. They cleaned off any dirt that was on her and everything mm. and then they brought her into the chapel for the sisters now she's laying down yeah flat. so she's laying flat on a stretcher so that stretcher was what she was on for quite a few I forget these I have it written down here I'd have to look it up yeah. but but um, she just what she would do for all these years when people would want to come to the monastery to pray to St. Catherine, to ask her to intercede for them, the four sisters were assigned to carry St. Catherine on the pallet from her room in the monastery. Mm -hmm. And then they'd have to lift the pallet right, up like right, that. Right. And then they, ha if you've never been to a cloistered monastery, you know, they have a little window where oh, you right, can right, talk. Right, sure. So they'd have to hold her up so you'd see her face right, right. in the window. Mm. But then uh, Catherine said, enough, enough of this. So she got another sister. She came back and said, I want you to build a chapel for me. So the, oh, and someone had attached a to the church. Someone had yeah, a vision. One or? of the nuns. Okay. And said, build a chapel because I don't want the nuns to have to keep carrying me when oh, the people want. Oh, yes, that's yes. Right. She, she loved, as I said, the sisters loved her and she loved them. She she was so humble, she took the lowest shot. She could do anything. She'd wash the dishes. You know, you studied her life. Catherine. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, so to get, get us into the chair. How'd oh. she get into the. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I, they and, did. And I say that because uh, Father Pat loves St. Catherine, and he knows her entire life, every little thing she did, some of her paintings, and I'm going to show you before we leave, and even some of the prayers that Father Shadwell translated. So I have to 
summarize. Yeah, zip me up. Yeah, no, no, no. It's <laughs> wonderful. She commanded to sit up <laughs> by one of the sisters. Who yeah, the sisters. She, she was noted for her obedience. <laughs> oh yeah, she was obedient. So that's right. The sister probably said that. Yeah, that's it. Thank you, Steve. You got it. Thanks. Steve, Steve. You know, he, he was Steve was a godson when he came here and translated. You know, that's how you know we can thank Father Steve here for giving that's all that translation. Wonderful. For everything. Yeah. So Steve, okay. So how did she get into the chair? Steve, Steve, why don't you tell us? Well, so well, I think Monsignor was, was right on track. Was that uh, they had a lifter? Yes. And the nuns could, just couldn't keep doing it. So she was noted in her lifetime for her obedience. And one of the mother abbess or some commanded her to sit up. Right. And she sat. D dead. This is oh, she's been dead for eons. At yeah. That point. She sat, and and they put her in the chair. And That's when you go, the chapel that she's in today that was remodeled like the, the church. It's a big church that the monastery is attached to. And the, in 1943, I think it was, it was bombed by America, by the, you know, on the confusion. Sure, so sure, a lot yeah. of damage was done to the main church and uh, to the wall where St. Catherine's, it stopped by the wall of the church where St. Catherine's Chapel was. Mm. But the rest of the things were blown out. The church was a mess. They have pictures of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there was not a thing out of place. In the in chapel. Saint, in the chapel. Not a thing out of place. Father Steve, what did you learn about her in translating? And maybe you can read one of our translations. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I mean, we've selected something if you wish. I think the most important thing that I learned about Catherine, besides studying her life and all that, was that she inserts herself into a long history of female mystics. So she's not like a dogmatic theologian or a scripture scholar. She's a mystical theologian. Right. Uh, and Pat will speak more to her artistic, but as a theologian, this means that as a mystical theologian, she would get most of her theology from experiences of the supernatural and then put that down on paper. Oh, okay. And a good example of this beginning would be like a Hildegard of Bingham uh, and on through Teresa of Avila mm. and so forth and so on, Catherine of Siena um, and Catherine of Bologna, inserts herself into that long history of mystical theologians. So a lot of her works are um, information that you would not be able to glean elsewhere, but it's a personal experience yes, yes, out yes. of which she draws her doctrine. So that's the most important thing. And of course, she sets, she puts herself in that group of female mystics that have the the mystical marriages with Christ. Yes. Uh, the metaphors she uses a lot of metaphors, uh, spiritual her spiritual gardens, her spiritual weapons, trees of Avalis, uh rooms of her castle. Right. Very Catherine of Bien, uh, uh, Hildegard of Bingham also uses garden imagery uh, for her uh, spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. So that's. The, I think that would be the most important thing I learned about. Right. Uh, okay. And and we're going to pick up again. But uh, give us one of the prayers of Saint Catherine. And while you're preparing that, I have to just comment on this painting, a Dipinta de San Catarina de su Tavo de Leño. It's a uh, painting by Saint Catherine uh, on wood. It is a beautiful picture, and, and I'll have a better image of this uh, before beautiful? at the end of the show. Who is it? Um, of Mary, the Blessed Mother, and baby Jesus. And, and around baby Jesus' neck, what does he have? The coronu, the, uh, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. I don't he, know if they had it back yeah, then. Yeah, whatever, what every Italian baby had, right? <laughs> it was to ward off evil spirits. I don't think that's a <laughs> well, These guys could appreciate all that. Right? <laughs> it's, 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 it's the coral. It, <laughs> it, it's they red know. coral. It's, it's uh, red coral, but yeah. I don't think it's yeah. coral, man. I think it's, <laughs> and also, at, that Pat was showing me before, and both of you indicated, this is St. Catherine's prayer book. These are images from her prayer book. And these paintings were inserted into her breviary, into her prayer book. She painted her. She, she painted, did the whole thing. Yeah. She, she, made, she made her own book. She illuminated her own manuscript. So this is all illuminated by St. Catherine right. and, and illustrated by St. Catherine. And the images are just so beautiful. And this is someone else painted but a picture of her yeah. um, holding the veil, the Veronica's veil. But what an artist, and in a monastery, um, cloistered monastery, all her time and was for order at Laborda, 
work yeah, of prayer. Right. Yeah, absolutely. But the, 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 the original is on display in the chapel with the, the room where, where Catherine is, her original, yes. Paintings. And then, oh yeah, yeah, not, 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 the sisters have taken most of them down, even this one that you just showed, it's, yes. it's not on display anymore because the colors, everything has sort of faded a bit. But the one that's in the chapel, which is really, I, I like the nicest one, uh, where Catherine is holding baby Jesus, another one, but Jesus is holding an apple. Oh, uh, very, yeah, very um, and, significant. Uh, and the symbolism is the new Adam. Jesus is the new Adam. So that's that is, that's a beautiful, but that's all there. In oh, well, right. on another thing, you can see a picture of wow. the chapel. Wow. Um, Steve, do you have any closing prayers for us? Well, I'll just read you a, an interesting mystical experience of her about the Saturday after Good Friday. So uh, in, it's a day that she dedicates to the Blessed Mother. And this is, from, this is drawn right from her own mystical experiences, this way of the cross. So this will give you a good indication of what I mean by her theology being based on mystical experiences. So she writes, the passion of the son over... The passion of the mother increased in herself, in her heart, in her womb was the faith of the church, the church which was dawning upon the world. In her were terrible birth pangs coupled with a powerful love. If in this pious mother the faith had not remained alive during your passion, the world would have arrived at its end, which justice for your torments would have required. By means of your passion, only salvation came to man. Yet no less are we obliged to the faith of her who kept unwavering trust and consciousness of future times, lit like a light in all darkness. All others having extinguished their lights, she remained in uninterrupted prayer, crying and keeping constant vigil and fast as she awaited your resurrection at a moment known to her after the three days in the tomb had been fulfilled. Friday was the day of your most bitter death, and the third is Sunday, the beloved day of you who rises. But Saturday, which is the middle, and which was bitter sweet, belongs entirely to Mary. On that day you took rest from your torments, from the most distinguished and eminent work of all of creation. On that day your mother's suffering increased with great sorrow, as she recalled those other three days she had lost you. For this prolonged spiritual martyrdom, you dedicated to her the middle day, Saturday. On this in-between day, she is mediatrix for us. Beautiful. Packed, packed, packed. with theology yeah. and Absolutely. significance. Wow. Yeah. This has been Father Louis Scurry, Father Steve Shawell, and Monsignor Papanos talking about who is St. Catherine of Bologna? And let me tell you, you have a little snippet in these last few minutes of who she is. We'll be back at future shows and fill in more detail about her artistic career, her mystical experiences, and other uh, aspects of how she landed here in the United States. God bless you, and let me hear from you. Father Lou Skirty at Hotmail.com. God bless you.